Hi everybody, this is Rick and this is Let's Level Up and today we're going to talk about something, a new game that I saw actually recently on tabletop um, which I thought would make a great addition for the shelf. It also is a game that I think I can play with my family because it's a very family friendly uh, atmosphere. It's also a very unique game. Um, it's not really about collecting points or battling my enemies, it's all about telling a story. I'm talking about Once Upon a Time. In this game, the players take turns telling uh, or creating a story based on the card elements that they have in their hand. Um, this game is very family friendly. It's also very good in the classroom setting because it teaches a lot of story building elements and, and uh, cooperation and things like that. So, very great game, very cheap. You definitely get your money's worth. And I'm really just right off the bat love the box how it opens up like a storybook so uh, it's very cool and we're gonna go through it and check it out hope you enjoy As I was saying, Once Upon a Time is a game where two or more players get together and tell a story. Um, at the beginning of each game, every player will be secretly dealt an end card, which is designated by this uh, story card here with lots of text on it. Now, all of the players in this game are going to be uh, cooperatively or um, basically as a team telling this fairy tale depending on whatever story cards that they have in their hand. However, every player is going to be secretly trying to steer the ending of the story towards their end so that they can ultimately achieve a victory. These ending cards can be silly, these ending cards, you really never know what you're going to get. There's quite a few of them here that are included in just the base game. Um, for instance, uh, this one says and their parents, and the parents were reunited with their long lost child. So, if I had this card at the beginning of the game, I know what I'm going to have to do is make sure I get parents, lost child, or lost and child out on the table in order for this to make sense. Or be able to shape the story around, um, or be able to have the other player shape the story around this event. So everybody's going to be trying to go to this. So at the beginning of the game, the first thing you do, You'll take this deck, you'll give it a good shuffle, and you'll deal one out to each of the players. Whenever you get this card, just set it in front of you as the player in order to get the in order to make sure you, you, you keep it here rather. Now, in cards aside, there are two types of cards. Um, there are story cards and then there are interrupt story cards. So before we get into the interrupt story cards, let's break down what the different story cards are. They'll be the same as the interrupt as well. So we have five different categories that story cards can be. There are the yellow cards, which are characters. There are the orange cards, which are going to be the places. There are the uh, teal cards, which are going to be things. The blue cards, which are aspects. And the purple cards, which are events that happen. So as you could probably guess, the yellow cards, the character cards here, are going to have different types of physical characters. For instance, a frog, a king, a fairy, a brother or a sister. So when I have these in my car, in my deck rather, and I'm telling these a story, these are going to be different characters that are going to be responsible or part of the story. Next are the orange cards. These are going to be the places. Um, these can be anything from a forest or a river to a kitchen or a palace. Each of these cards is going to designate an actual place that this story is being that is occurring. Next are going to be the things. These are the physical elements that are part of the story, from fire to a book to a tree to a window to a ring to food. Now each of these cards is going to represent a thing, and all of these story cards, however, don't necessarily have to be just what's on the card. For instance, um, this fairy may have a name. This fairy may have a specific aversion to fire. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do and what you'll do as a storyteller um, to bring this card to life and to bring this character or, or to describe the forest. Maybe it's haunted. 
um, by wildfire and it's the land of the fairy. Uh, who knows what it's going to be? It's up for you and the rest of the storytellers to bring these cards to life. Uh, the next cards we're going to have are the aspects. These are going to, to describe either the characters, uh, the things, or the places in the game, such as uh, sad, if it was stolen, if it was disguised, um, tiny, maybe it's a tiny forest of fire. Who knows what it's going to be? Uh, the last type of story card are the purple cards, which are going to be the event cards. These are physical, or these are actual occurrences that are happening in the story. This is something that's going to be, um, rather than just walking to it, this is, for instance, this event is arguing. Um, this one is escaping. So these are kind of the action that's going to be found in, in the actual story. So, as I'm telling the story, I'm going to have a hand of cards in front of me. I'm going to be telling my story. So, for instance, I would start the game off with, uh, let's pretend that this is the only card in my hand. Uh, I would say, once upon a time, there was a fairy named Rick, and I would set fairy down. And if I had the other card, like Forest, and, and no, Rick lived in the enchanted forest of um, Pottersville, and I would play down the Forest card. And I would keep playing these cards until I have no cards left in my hand. At that time, I'll be able to play my end only if it makes sense. So there will be some times where I'm going to have to pass my turn. There are going to be some times where I just can't go anymore. There will be some times I get stumbled. Most often what's going to happen are the other players around the table are going to want to take part of the story. So they're going to do what's called interrupt. And this is one of your actions you can do when you're not telling the story. So there are two types of interruptions you can do. Uh, you can interrupt the storyteller if they say, a, uh, they say the name of a card that you're holding in your hand. For instance, if I am telling the story and I am describing uh, Rick the Fairy and how Rick is very sad, um, if you had the card sad as the aspect, you could play that card, or sorry, you can play this card down and interrupt me and take my turn. That would cause me to then give the story to you and then also draw another um, another card from the story deck. So the other types of interruptions are going to be the actual interrupt story cards. Now these are also of the five different types of the things, the characters, uh, the events, places, and the aspects. The only difference of these cards you'll notice here is at the top of the card there's going to be a little interrupt icon and then it'll say interrupt in black text, uh, text underneath this. These cards serve a dual purpose. I can play these as the storyteller if I wanted to say the fairy's home was in a uh, large tree that's in the middle of the forest. And I can play it as a normal story card. Or, if I have these cards in my hand and I'm not the storyteller, I can play these interrupt story cards if the storyteller plays a card that matches the same color. So for instance, in my previous example, as soon as I were to lay down the forest card and that uh, another of the players had this card that says home, that player would then be able to play this card and interrupt my story. Anytime you interrupt the story, you'll be able to, uh, again, take over the story and force me to draw a card. So you're trying to keep me from having as little, it's, it's, it's a lot like Uno in the fact that I can only play my ending when I'm low on, uh, when I have no cards in my hand. So you're going to want to make sure I, I keep cards coming into my hand. Now, there are times where I can play an interrupt that's not going to be well received on the table. Um, if I play an interrupt and the rest of the table decides that that's not an appropriate interrupt, they're going to have me discard whatever card I use to interrupt and then draw two new cards from the top of the story deck. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that the interrupt that you're playing is going to match what's happening in the story. Now outside of interrupts, there are going to be time when I'm just not doing a very good job as being a storyteller, uh, much like uh, being a blogger in real life. <laughs> uh, there are going to be times where I ramble, there are going to be times where I just can't think of anything, there may be times where I contradict myself. When that happens, the table can challenge whoever the current storyteller is. If that challenge is passed, for instance, say I contradicted uh, elements in the story and I bring up a character who had previously died in the story or a place that was destroyed or something like that. 
Uh, the table can then challenge where I'm going with the story, and if that challenge passes by a majority vote of the table, um, I'll then draw a card and play will proceed to the player on my left. If the challenge is unsuccessful, I keep telling my story. Now I have a general rule of thumb as I'm telling the story. I say you need one to three sentences between cards that you're laying down. So I can't just say there was a fairy who was afraid of fire in a forest and he was sad and there was he overheard he really wanted to escape. I can't play all these cards down in the same sentence. Um, it's one that's not really telling the story that's just trying to get rid of your cards so you can play the game. This game is about the journey. This game is not about winning. Um, so it's everybody's gonna have a good time or in order for everybody to have a good time rather you need to make sure that you're telling the best story possible. So think about what you want these characters to do, where you want these things to be. Don't just play a card for the sake of playing it. Really have something in mind. That's where the, the difficulty of this game comes in, is it, it causes you to think uh, as a storyteller. It causes you to uh, use parts of your brain that you may not use every day if you're not a writer. Um, so this is a way for you to be able to exercise that. It's actually why Once Upon a Time is really good for classroom settings as well because it promotes that type of creative thinking that is um, very good for children and also it's, it's good for adults as well. I think anytime you're exercising that part of your brain, the better off you're going to be. So at the beginning of the game, like I said, you're going to get one of these. You're also going to get story cards and what you'll do is you'll combine all the interrupt cards with all the other different story cards to make a deck. It'll be a pretty large deck. You'll shuffle this up really good and you'll hand out 11 of these cards minus the number of players with a minimum of five cards. So it's going to be five to uh, nine basically cards per player. So you'll shuffle these up, you'll divvy them out equally amongst the players and then you'll put the rest of the cards in the deck. So as I play cards and I'm telling the story, I'll play them out in front of me like this. Um, just so that everybody knows where we're at in the story, what cards and what elements have been played. Anytime I lose or I get challenged, it's basically drawing a card into my hand and then passing play to either who interrupted me or to the player, uh, to the next player in line. This game is a fantastic game. It's suitable for all ages. Um, it definitely is one that you can bring into really any game group, I think, because I, th I think everybody can embrace this concept. You know, we're all raised on fairy tales, or at least the most of us. Um, most of the people I know, rather. And um, it's fun to, to create. And it's always fun to um, bring stories to life and to bring characters to life. That's why Once Upon a Time is so great. So if you like this video or any of our previous videos, please subscribe. Please uh, like the video as well. Also, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, all under the guise of Let's Level Up or letslevelup.net. Please look for the uh, sword and dice icon, and if you really liked it, you can pick up Once Upon a Time for about $15 to $20 on Amazon, and I'm sure your local game store has a copy of it as well. As always, thanks so much, and game on.